So get ready, guys. She's back in the Atlantic Ocean. And just like that, Munchkin is back in her home. And her journey to get healthy again with us is done. But this is only the beginning for those of us tracking Munchkin. This is really when Munchkin's journey begins. The story's not over. Here, nope. Here she comes. I actually get more anxious after we release the turtle because then I'm going to be monitoring her in real time. Pretty soon we will be logging into the computer and I'll be watching where she goes along with Dr. Cara Dodge. She's only a few feet back to her home. And we'll be trying to understand not only the survivorship of this turtle, but where does this species and this age class tend to go when they're here? So how do you figure this out? A big part of it is this GPS tag attached to Munchkin's back. And it's one of the most valuable tools we have to understand the secret lives of these animals. And you might think that an animal this size would be an animal we already know a lot about, but the truth is quite the opposite. We do get people who ask if we already know enough, and those are usually people who had no idea that sea turtles were even off of Cape Cod. So there's a lot we don't know about these turtles and what they're doing here. Much of the lives of sea turtles still remains an unsolved mystery to science, and especially the turtles up here in the Cape Cod area. For our sea turtle conservation program, our goal is to return animals to the wild. So we need to know whether rehabilitated sea turtles survive, and we can't tell if they survive unless we track them or monitor them in some way. The other piece to this is to figure out if Munchkin resumes her normal loggerhead behavior and returns to her old breeding waters. When it's time to breed, sea turtles return to the beach where they were once born. Loggerhead breeding populations and nesting beaches are found in several locations around the world, but we have no idea where Munchkin is from or if she'll make an attempt to journey back home, which could mean as far away as the Mediterranean Sea. And this GPS tag is the way to find out. This particular satellite tag is extra cool because for Munchkin, we'll be able to know where she is within like 20 to 30 meters. For the tag to be any use at all, it has to stay on her back and it can't run out of power. Now the steps taken to ensure the tag stays on Munchkin were meticulous. First, her carapace was thoroughly cleaned. No barnacles, algae, or dirt of any kind could remain. Then a base layer of epoxy and fiberglass were made to create a foundation to attach the tag to. The tag was glued on with more epoxy glue, and a special putty and new layer of fiberglass added for extra security. The next problem is to make sure it doesn't run out of power. The turtle surfaces, and it had an antenna on the tag, and when the antenna surfaces, it's sending a radio signal to a satellite, and it is able to calculate the turtle's position based on that information. The tag has to be out of the water in order for it to communicate with the satellites. So that tag actually has these little on-off switches that know when the tag's wet and dry. So it's continuously collecting data, but it's not trans continuously transmitting data. And within a few hours of releasing her, we got some positive news. Kara Dodge says, you guys are not going to believe this. Munchkin is already on the move and pinging in. Check out this map, it's working. That's awesome. <laughs> Within the first week of being back in the ocean, Munchkin has made some incredible progress and showed signs of a promising adventure ahead. After a day of sticking relatively close to the coast in a westerly direction, she went straight south through the Nantucket Sound and continued west past Martha's Vineyard. Wherever she goes from here, we can say for sure that the journey won't be easy and she will definitely face many dangers. You know, my worst case scenario is going onto my computer and seeing Munchkin in the same location for hours at a time. That's not a good sign. Um, and going out and finding her that she's been hit by a boat or tangled up in something. So I guess the worst case scenario is Munchkin not surviving, not because of part of the rehabilitation process or anything like that, but because of just the number of um, human threats in her environment. There are seven species of sea turtles in the world, and six of them are threatened with extinction. The issues these sea turtles face is largely caused by humans, such as accidental bycatch and fishing gear, illegal trade and poaching, vessel strikes, loss of nesting habitats, plastic pollution, and changing climates. And the good thing is that not only are we learning more and more about these incredible sea turtles and the environment in general, but we are learning how to protect them. 
Thanks everybody for watching, for following Jonas and Haley and I as we follow along with Munchkin's journey. Make sure you go to munchkinsjourney.com where you can follow where she's going at any time via that satellite tag. Remember, you can help not only by picking up trash and making sure that the ocean stays clean, but also by helping support the aquarium and the work that they're doing at the Turtle Hospital. We'll see you in the next series. I wanted to say a big thank you to the New England Aquarium for letting me follow along on this journey. I encourage you to go check out munchkinsjourney.com. Also, a huge Huge thanks to all of my patrons who are helping me tell some of these important wildlife stories. Thanks again.